Karan, I know you're on a cruise to get us automotive technology. I'm not quite sure what the relevance is. Just tell us about it all. Simply unbelievable. Here I am cruising towards my quest for technology in the harshest of conditions and this is what I get to hear. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to get bogged down. I will cruise along quite literally in this case and make you a promise. And that promise is today I will show you the next generation of automobile technology. Yes, that's the promise. But before I fulfill that promise, since I've already got accused, since I'm already here, I'll show you all that I have seen until now. So here is gorgeous and beautiful Australia. So what did I promise you? I promised you next generation of automobile technology, didn't I? So here I am once again, as I said, I never go back on my promises. So what I'm about to demonstrate is nothing less than magic. Let me just say it again. Nothing less than magic. Okay. So you've seen those magic shows. You've seen those magicians driving a car without their hand on the steering wheel. That's exactly what I'm about to do. But as I always say, I'm a very, very safe driver. So believe me, I'm not about to do anything hanky-panky. All I'm going to do is show you a clean demonstration of technology. But as I said, it's nothing less than magic. Check this out. I'm just going to click a button. It's called Active Park Assist. What it does really is, it's going to help me park without even me doing anything. So, my hand is not going to be on the steering wheel. It's going to park on itself. So, first, let's find a parking spot. Active Park Assist employs ultrasonic sensors on front and rear bumpers to help the system calculate available space. Okay, so here on, the magic starts. And since the system already controls the steering wheel, in addition to the on-screen instruction to change your gears in reverse or drive, it's quite literally next to negligent driver inputs besides accelerator and brakes. And it's asking me to drive forward again. And while it does take a few tries to become an expert, but if you still crash while using this feature, it's your own fault. As far as my test was concerned, it parallel parked with an uncanny precision beyond human capabilities. And it's already complete. So that's done. As I said, nothing less than magic. So that was magic one. Now, let's move on to magic two. Active City Stop works by monitoring traffic ahead of the vehicle, automatically applying brakes if an imminent collision is detected. The system can completely prevent collisions at the speed of up to 10 miles per hour and reduce the severity of the impact at speeds of up to 18 miles per hour. But it works. And still talking about the next generation of in-car technology, I'm just about to show you something that is coming very soon to India. And believe me, this is something even I have been looking forward to. So this is called SYNC and let's get started. Now, it's essentially pairing your mobile phone to the cluster over here. And after that, you don't have to worry about anything. You just have to talk to the cluster quite literally. Let me show you how. Phone. Phone. Please say a command. Call Bob Graziano. Calling Bob Graziano. Hello, this is Bob. Hi, Bob. An integrated in-vehicle communication and entertainment system, SYNC allows users to make hand-free telephone calls and control music and other functions using voice commands. USB, please say a command. Play track, beat it. In simple terms, call it a Siri in the car. The technology also provides features like caller ID, call waiting and conference calling to name a few. Now I've just quickly stepped out of the car to show you a feature that will be incorporated in the cars coming in future. And the reason why I've done that is because this is one feature which is very close to my heart. It's called the Apps Link. What it really does is those thousands of apps in the cloud and those hundreds of apps on your smartphone. What do you do if you want to change one to the other? Well, in normal circumstances, you'll have to click the button over here. But while you're driving, 
that is one dangerous thing to do. So what's the next best thing? Use voice commands and that's exactly what I'm about to demonstrate. Now just for a moment because I'm saying so, take a look at this and think about it as a console embedded in your car. And these little buttons over there as the ones on your steering. So what do I do? I need to change an app. All I need to do is just talk to it. NPR News, please say a command. Mobile apps. Mobile apps, please say a command. Tune in radio. Tune in radio, please say a command. Local radio. And it's that easy. Now you know how I've always said that if you really want to crash and bang your car, do it in the virtual world? Well, I really meant it because it's a lot more safer, it's a lot more saner. But talking about virtual world, you've always seen me doing it with the joystick. This one is bigger. In fact, it just doesn't get bigger than this. A system designed to test practical day-to-day -day design optimizations for in-development models. Virtual Reality Center at Ford Australia uses a combination of 3D headsets, infrared motion capture cameras, gloves and a plastic model to simulate a life-size vehicle for up to two users to sit in and step out of a virtual car. The rendered environments can be used by designers to examine aspects as intricate as the distance of buttons, mirrors, textures on the dashboard to even whether or not pillars obstruct the field of view. You can also step out and walk into the side and boot of a virtual car, hence making it one of the most accurate simulations to date for interacting with the car in a virtual world. Okay, so I have to admit, it's a very, very dizzying experience, but at the same time, it's amazing. And no matter how dizzy it is because of that 3D effect, every time I get the opportunity, I would love to go through it again and again. Amazing.